Welcome to Your Stories Podcast, where we hear candid stories from people conquering cancer. I'm your host, Brenda Brody, and I am delighted to welcome my friend, Stacy White, to the podcast today. Stacy is an incredible mother of three children and two stepchildren, and a wife who has faced breast cancer three times. Today, we will discuss how Stacy keeps chasing her passions while facing a cancer diagnosis. Stacy, welcome to the podcast. I really appreciate you being on and, and sharing what you've been through. Will you take us back? I mean, I still can't believe you've had three <laughs> cancer diagnoses, but can you take us back to the first one? That was 2011? Yeah. So in 2011, I think I was. 41 years old. I was working a think tank in Washington, D.C. I had three small kids. I had just gotten divorced maybe two years before. And I was living on my own in Washington, D.C. And I um, went for a mammogram, you know, in between meetings and didn't really think anything of it. They called, they said they, they thought they saw something, but it was probably just a poor image if I could come back. And so I did come back on a Friday. I got a call Monday morning. I was in my office about to do a panel, actually. And I was leaving for Japan very soon afterwards because there'd just been the great Japan tsunami. And I got a call and, and the doctor said, I'm, I'm really sorry, but you have, you have breast cancer. And I was just so floored by just my whole world changed as anyone who is diagnosed with cancer, you know, you just, your whole world just changes like in that absolute moment. So that was, you know, that was a real pivotal moment for me, for sure. I leaned on people who'd been through it before. We had a mutual friend. She helped me get an oncologist and a surgeon. And I found out that my cancer was in the left breast. It wasn't very large. It wasn't terribly aggressive. And I had a lumpectomy. I remember my husband and I went to the movies that night. I had a lumpectomy in the morning and we went to the movies that night. I felt perfectly fine. I had radiation afterwards. And I just felt like this lucky one who had, you know, maybe the not so bad cancer because I didn't have to have chemotherapy. My, um, my gene recurrence score, they sort of score, they take part of the cancer and they study it and they give you a score to let you know sort of like what are the chances of recurrence and also, you know, will you extend your life in any significant way with a chemotherapy treatment? And in my case, it wasn't really worth it. So they did radiation, they did the lumpectomy. I felt like, oh, I've, I, I actually, you know, this is not, not a big deal. And so I did go back to work and I continued with my life and, you know, she thought I'd amazing. passed it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I, it, it was amazing. And we all felt so blessed that that's, it was the call. You got the cancer call and, but we were grateful that it was a lumpectomy and you didn't have to go through all of, of the other things that unfortunately you did the next two times. Can you walk us through now? What were the differences between the next two? So that was 2011. How did you figure out you had cancer again? What year was that? And, and what happened? In all of my times being diagnosed, it's always almost exactly three years um, in mm. between each diagnosis. And it's always been either on my birthday or right before my birthday to the point that, you know, doctors and technicians are, you know, they'll look at my history and be like, ah, oh, really too, too bad that it's always <laughs> around your birthday. And I said, I know Happy I haven't birthday. really had a good birthday in a while. So in 2014, I again went for, you know, I was still getting mammograms because I'd just had the lumpectomy and they saw something again. I just remember tears falling down my face. And I remember my oncologist at the time said something that really, you know, he really got it. He's like, being re-diagnosed is devastating. And psychologically, it's absolutely devastating. This time I had a full double mastectomy. That was a much bigger deal. As you know, a double mastectomy is not really a walk in the park. It really took me a good two weeks to even sort of be like walking around at home and things like that. And then three years later, almost to the day, 
I used to have this job in humanitarian disaster work and I travel all over the world and I was headed to Asia for like three weeks. I went to my general practitioner and she said, Stacey, you need to go to your oncologist mm-hmm. right away. And then I got all sorts of scans. I'd always had breast cancer on my left breast, but then they found a tumor in my right lymph node, which basically meant it had traveled and that it was now metastatic. Being told you have metastatic cancer is very much like getting hit by a truck. I'm here to tell you it's not a death sentence, but that is how people take it. That is how your family takes it. That's how friends take it. Even the doctors, it was very interesting. I noticed the entire demeanor of my oncologist kind of changed. One thing that is interesting, and you probably lived through this too, like when you get a cancer diagnosis, it is like, not only is it devastating, but it's a race. So in a span of about two and a half months, I had a surgery to remove my implants and and do kind of double mastectomy all over again. I had my ovaries out immediately. So I had a ton of surgeries very quickly. I then went and did radiation again, um, where they sort of (laughs) just tried to, you know, blaze everything away as best they could. You went through so much physically between the surgeries and figuring out the clinical trials. And then you had to face things from an emotional perspective next. And, uh, I, you know, I just admire you for all you've done. For the folks that have gotten it again and are thinking about taking out their implants and everything, you feel very at peace with the choices that you made, which I, I think says a lot. That point of your third diagnosis, you just radically took your breasts and you moved on. And I have been so in awe. And I think your husband's been very supportive about it. And I think that is huge for someone going through what you have gone through. Well, my husband's mother died of breast cancer. So he's always from the get-go kind of gotten it. She died, you know, many years ago in the in the 90s. And she was living in Argentina at the time. But his mother got very depressed when she was diagnosed with metastatic cancer. And so I think he just gets it. He just gets it from a psychological perspective and also physically. And then, you know, psychologically, I was always very matter of fact with my children about what was going on. I didn't want to make a bigger deal about it than it, than it was. What was interesting with this latest diagnosis, though, was that I was acting very normal at home, but they <laughs> would get, you know, that kind of the, the teacher or the neighbor or the parent from school who would... I don't know, treat them a certain way that they thought, oh, wow, this is my mom's going to die. So that's really where they were getting that message more than they were getting it from me or my family or my husband. Yeah, I think that's a great point because you've had a great attitude and, uh, you know, your kids, our kids, my my daughter was the same way. She's watching how I'm reacting and then she's going to react the same way. But we can't control the community around us and how they react. And sometimes how they react really does impact our kids in really challenging ways. But I think that the way you're living your life is an inspiration. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about what have you done now? You went back to school. Why don't we talk a little bit about that? So what made you go back and get a master's? During my whole career, I had done disaster response work. So I'd gone to countries that were either in conflict or just been hit by, you know, a tsunami or a hurricane or or what have you. So going to places with certain diseases or refugee camps became less possible for me, or at least I felt it was less possible. I was also on my third diagnosis during the course of the entire time I'd been in my 40s, which is sort of the central time that you're building your career and becoming really a, a master at whatever profession that you've built. So that was tough. A third diagnosis, I mean, your life is interrupted, your work is interrupted, but I was kind of ready for something new. And I was up late because one of the things when women are diagnosed with metastatic cancer is they can't sleep very well. So I was up in the middle of the night, (laughs) anxious, not sleeping. And I found a modern architecture class 
at GW, George Washington University. And I just wrote the professor at 3 a.m. Hey, can I audit this class? Because I was doing radiation anyway that spring. So she wrote me back, said absolutely. And um, and that sort of started this journey. I'd always been interested in design and interiors and architecture. And, and so- I must say, you're great at it. Even oh. before you took this. So I think it was a brilliant move, Stacey. You took your passion. You were able to then go back to school. You were, and you have finished now, let's just say that, which wasn't easy, and raising teenagers, which you've done a brilliant job of, and you've got extra time with them, which you can't take back with your past career. You would have been traveling all the time. So I think it's very inspiring that you went ahead, and now that you've graduated... Tell us, uh, you're now working in the field. Yeah, so I graduated in May. And so now I'm working with a residential designer and I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm so happy going on site, working with architects, working with contractors, solving problems, completely living what I was always meant to do, to be honest. That's how I feel. Right. And And I loved my other career. I traveled the world. I met people from all different countries. And it was very exciting and wonderful. And it does help me even in my current career, just because I can relate to, you know, clients and different people um, that we work with. So it's wonderful, but I am very, very happy. I feel really, really lucky. I mean, and this is, I guess, one of the things, you know, we've talked about and that I, I, I really think is so important is that I said before that, you know, I thought this was a death sentence when I was told, but it's not, it's, it's Mm -hmm. so not, I mean, now I've passed my three-year mark, you know, normally at three years, I always have a scan that shows something. Now I'm at three and a half years and I'm still clean. So that was a fantastic landmark for me, you know, big, big thing that happened this year. And I've had all this time to prepare my children, you know, my children are now, two of them are in college. One is in high school. Mm -hmm. I remember one of my dreams was to make sure that I saw my youngest graduate from high school. And now she's a junior. I find this living with cancer. It's a real thing. It's an absolute real thing. It's not a slogan. It's not some soundbite. It is real. But you're lucky because you've done amazing things and you've touched amazing people and it's come back twofold to you. And I agree with you. I think getting any kind of cancer diagnosis, going through aggressive cancer is extremely challenging for the individual and for the families and juggling it all. And you always reached out. You always found experts. You always made sure you were talking to your oncologist. And like you said, Stage four doesn't have to be a death sentence. On that note, I thank you so much for sharing this because it's very inspiring to me and to others that have the opportunity to meet you, hear from you, hear your story, because not every day does someone get breast cancer three times. And I am in awe of you daily. I'm here for you always. And I'm just grateful that you were on the podcast today. Thank you so much, Brenda. And thanks for everything that you're doing with Conquer Cancer. Thank you. Hearing the experiences of others can help people cope with the challenges cancer brings. Help others find their inspiring stories by leaving a review of the podcast and subscribe today on iTunes or Spotify to hear every new episode. Thanks for listening to Your Stories, Conquering Cancer. The participants of this podcast report no conflicts of interest relevant to this podcast. Full disclosures can be found on the episode page on conquer.org. The purpose of this podcast is to educate and to inform. This is not a substitute for professional medical care and is not intended for use in the diagnosis or treatment of individual conditions. Guests on this podcast express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions. The mention of any product, service, organization, activity, or therapy should not be construed as an ASCO endorsement.